Welcome back, gang. It's Delty from DeltyasGaming.com, and it's time for Lord Warden, a stamina PvP build that absolutely rocks. I'm gonna break down skills, gear, champion points, and everything else, along with a lot of flexibility in terms of skills and gear choices. Timestamps will be below if you want to skip ahead to a certain section, but you should watch all the way throughs and especially watch them ads. In all seriousness, if you get something out of this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe so I'll keep cranking out this content. Without further ado, the Stamina Warden, also known as Lord Warden! Okay, so let's go over some major changes with the Warden so you can know and understand why and how it's so powerful. First change up is to Cutting Dive. This used to be able to stack bleeds. Now we're going to use this as a main spamble. I'll go over it a little bit later, but it's very, very important to understand the change. Now Cutting Dive will set enemies off balance if you are seven meters away from the target. If the enemy is not off balance, the Cliff Racer will rip through them doing bleed damage over 10 seconds. So why is off balance so important? Well, we're going to cover it here a little bit later, but the exploiter passive and champion points is going to give us the most damage for our CP slot above your slain CP PvP. Also with off balance, you can use what's called a medium weave. Slightly holding down the trigger or whatever your attack is a little bit longer than light attack and knock down that enemy for kind of a free stun. Also, they're off balance. You can consume the off balance by doing a fully charge heavy attack and getting double the resource sustained. So off balance, the twirlies over their head, extraordinarily important for damage and resource sustain. So cutting dive is still very, very useful. Now, massive change to Falcon Swiftnet. This is the base morph and we're going to use the birds of prey on our build. This skill now grants four seconds of snare and a mobilization immunity after activating. So now not only do you get 5% minor berserk for slotting this thing, you can activate it for major berserk, but basically it becomes a Sigic order race against time. Thank the maker you don't have to go carry the skull around for eight hours and get Sigic order or spend a gazillion crowns. This skill, game changer for people that can't stand Sigic order race against time. The biggest change here is to Arctic Blast. Essentially, I've been complaining about the Warden for a very long time of that, that it didn't have a heal that scaled off of your offensive stat. Well, now the Arctic Blast does. So no longer do Wardens have to pigeonhole into high HP builds to get a really decent and effective heal using magic abilities. Now you can use Arctic Blast more, stack a ton of weapon and spell damage similar to what the Necro does and have extraordinarily burst healing. Also this increased status effects, you're gonna get some damage over time rather than a heal over time. And the mother of all changes, an AOE stun on demand. Now, the trick with the Arctic Blast is you can still block it, so it's not unavoidable like a Dragonite's Fossilize. Getting the offensive scaling heal that does an AoE massive stun? Absolute game changer, and that's why the Warden is S tier, because of these changes and more. So those are the major changes. So now the Warden has mind-numbing damage, great survivability, and mobility. Really the only thing that holds the class back from being the number one is resource sustain and the reliance on magic abilities. So I'm gonna play this like a hybrid. You're gonna use a lot of your magic abilities for buffs and or healing and stick to stamina just for your pretty much main damage and resolving vigor. Speaking of that, resolving vigor got a change, making stamina and or stamina hybrids extraordinarily strong and that it gives minor resolve. So on a Warden using a couple skills, you can get Major Resolve, Minor Resolve, and Minor Protection, making you high armor, high mitigation, and extraordinarily tanky. So let's move on to the skills. Now, I play the Warden a little bit different. I like the dual wield play style on the front. You're gonna see a couple different combinations here, and basically the bar setup is pretty much the same for a two-handed. So I'm gonna give you both. Why you should use dual wheel? I use dual wood for the big, huge AOE kills, right? And so I'm jumping into combat and I'm playing super aggressive and I just slam down a Dawn Breaker and my deep fissure lands and I'm killing everybody. The other way to play it is better for a single target, better for a duel or maybe a 1VX and that's with two hander. So let me go through the skills and you just have to make a couple changes depending on what you need, what your play style is. Keep in mind, I like the front two maces, and I like the big AOE plays. So on my bar working left to right, we have Deep Fissure, which is up first. This also got a change, so it's gonna fire out twice. The first initial shot is not the hardest hitting, so this is the normal three seconds. And then six seconds later, it's gonna fire off another one, and this is gonna be the big damage component. Now, it's magic-based damage, and it costs magic, and this is where primarily you're gonna offensively feed your magic through. But the major reason you're using this is it gives major and minor breach, reducing armor significantly. We 
already talked about the resolving vigor change. People are stacking tons and tons of armor. This is another reason why Wardens hit just so hard and a main staple of your build. So every nine seconds, you should be maintaining this. Even when you go on your back bar, it'll fire off and kill people constantly. So bull niche, we're going to slot. This is going to give us weapon damage and resource sustain. The reason we put it on the front of our bar is the advanced species passive, increasing armor pen for 990 for each animal companion ability slotted. So now we not only have major and minor breach built in with our kit, but every single thing we put on this front bar is going to have us have big pen, perfect for the current meta. So how you use this bull niche is it's free. It doesn't cost anything and it's going to cleanse effects. You have to be cognizant of plague break. It also cleanse effects kind of even when you're not even using it just passively does it every five seconds but what you can do is you can just reactivate it for a zero low cost free heal because the bond of nature passive gives you some health every time an animal companion ability ends so if you don't have anything going on consider using your global cooldowns on bull niche to see if you can get some resources back or just some extra healing so this skill here with the weapon and spell damage uh, buff allows us to use whatever weapon choices we want we're not pigeonholed into a 2h using rally or forward momentum Next ability, a birds of prey. So we already talked about a couple of the passives. So slotting on the front is going to give us more damage. We're going to get increased immunity to snares and mobilizations. We're not going to activate this very frequently, but when we go in for a big, huge charge, this is when we're going to activate it. Mainly, we're just setting in for getting to increase our damage. Next ability up is cutting dive. This one is either going to set off balance or it's going to cause bleed. The off balance is very important. So usually you're firing this off at a distance as you hit that birds of prey, closing the distance in the hopes of getting off balance. Then you're ripping off a fully charged heavy attack, hoping to stun that opponent and then do a DB so they can't block it. That's part of the combo, which I'll get to a little bit later. Now, the alternative play style to this is if you want to use a dizzying swing two-handed. This would be ideal for a player that wants to do duels or 1VX primarily, not use the big, huge AoE plays. In that case, swap out cutting die for dizzying swing, and you're just ready to go with a two-hander. Next ability up is our execute, whirling blades from dual wield. It costs a ton of stamina, but this is how you get absolutely big nukes in AoE with Plague Break. So I use this typically when someone one's right around 20%, 25%. If they're above that, it doesn't make sense to keep spamming me because of the cost and the, the ability scales the lower the HP they get. So stick with cutting dive unless it's a big, huge AoE nuke, but you're charging in, ramboing in with the off balance. And if you hit them with a deep fissure along with Dawnbreaker, they're pretty much going to be very, very low and close to execute range. And you can assume a Whirling Blades will finish them off. A good alternative here, if you want to go the Dizzying Swing 2H front bar loadout, is just swap out Whirling Blades for execute here in two-hander and you're doing a really good dual build pretty much the exact same skills so now we're going to get on the back bar you have a bunch of different choices in two specific ones that i absolutely love for back bar defensive options why we go with the back bar sword and shield or frost staff is for block mitigation so if you're new to pvp or you're watching this video typically people die constantly because they're nervous someone starts hitting them and beating on them and they don't know how to react Put a sword and shield or a frost staff on your back bar because it lowers your damage. You can calm down, heal yourself, rebuff, and get back into the fight. So this is the common loadout that we're going to go with. I'm going to use sword and shield. Strength of sword and shield is a sword and shield ultimate. Very low cost. It reflects range projectiles and it's fantastic. Don't sleep on the frost staff, however. The frost staff strengths is doesn't cut your enchant in half and it doesn't cut your trait in half either. You can get the same block mitigation, but you won't have access to the ultimate. So those are the pros and the cons. You can build up a little bit more resources and specifically magic at range with the ice staff. Both are good options. Depends on what alt you're going to use. And I'll give you some alternatives. Here we go. First ability up, Ice Fortress. This is going to be an armor buff, major resolve. It's also going to give us minor protection. So maintaining this, it also lasts a lot longer now. Very easy to maintain and lower on the resource sustain. Now here is a really important skill. And you're going to have some options here. So I play this a little bit different than most. I use Green Lotus. What this does is going to give you your crit buff. Even if you cast it on your back bar and you flip to your front, you're still going to get the crit buff. I I like playing a high critical build because it's a lot of burst. So you get major prophecy and major savagery. Now the trick is when you do light or fully charged heavy attacks, which I've talked about frequently, you're going to restore health. 
So this allows you to play super aggressive and it lasts 20 seconds. The downside is it doesn't have the resource sustain component that another skill I'm gonna give you does. But I use Engine Guardian typically for my resource sustain and this allows me to play very aggressive, kind of like the old Magic Templar. As long as I'm throttling down light attack weaving, heavy attack weaving, I'm getting a ton of help so I can stay in the fight. Plus I'm constantly casting Bull Netch or Deep Fissure goes off. I'm getting passively healing with the Animal Companion passive bond with nature as well, making it very, very aggressive. So love this skill. Now the skill that people will flex in and out because they like the resource sustain is Leeching Vines. This skill basically procs a passive. So what it's gonna do is when you're taking damage, you're basically gonna get healed. And it can proc nature's gift. So when you heal an ally with green balance, you get magic or stamina back, whichever is lowest, and it can occur every one second. So essentially, if you're getting beaten on or someone else is getting beaten on and you cast this on them, you're gonna get a flood of resource sustain. So this is also a very, very good alternative. The thing about it is you have to maintain it more frequently. And I like the passive benefit of just ripping off a fully charged heavy attack and getting back a ton of health. So two really important choices there, I'd say experiment both and see what works best for you. Next up is Elude. This is uh, five medium armor is required. And what this does is when you take damage, you're going to get major expedition. So you're gonna be less reliant on using birds of prey. Um, also, what this does is it allows us to lower our damage taken by major evasion buff. So you're going to be very, very tanky with this. Consider this a flex spot. Not everyone wants to run this and you can run a whole bunch of different slots here, especially with just some passive you could just set on here. Why I use this personally is I'm allowed to charge in, Rambo in, and dunk on people with huge Dawn Breakers without the need of getting AoE nuked myself. So it allows me to get that major expedition more frequently and play super aggressive, which I love. Now, Arctic Blast, the big change. This skill is a complete game changer. Arctic Blast takes a ton of uh, magic. It lasts 20 seconds seconds. It does damage over time. It does an AoE stun in six meters and it heals pretty decent, scales with your highest offensive stats. So the more weapon and spell damage you have, the more max stats, the more effective this is going to be healing. So I'm getting 10, 12K crits in combat with this, not in champion points. So it's very, very effective. I use this as a buff and also a burst heal. So I try to maintain this for the damage and also recast it for a stun or a burst heal. My primary focus on healing is resolving vigor. So this is gonna heal over five seconds. It got a huge buff. It heals way, 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 way better. Now the trick with resolving bigger it gives minor resolve over 20 seconds so you see these two are both 20 seconds even if you're um fully topped off you're still gonna want to cast these frequently to maintain those buffs and then you have a back bar that's very easy to maintain so when i'm taking pressure typically i do resolving bigger first and then an arctic blast i get the heals over time rolling and then a burst heal to top me off and a stun to peel and run away and then the ultimate of choice is spell wall so i'm using sword and board because i love this thing so if i'm getting peppered i have tons of speed so getting away is never an issue for me the range projectiles sometimes are so so I pop this, zip away, heal myself up. Now, the alternative that you can run is Enchanted Forest. This is from Green Balance. This is built up within your kit. It's a very low cost ultimate that heals you. Um, it's stationary though. So if you sit in here, you're very, very low, bang. You're getting them like back to back to back if you lose, use it at very low HP. So if you like the ice staff on the back bar, or you wanna do something else, swap in Defensive Alt and Enchanted Forest is my go-to. All right, we're here in game. We're gonna show you how to use these abilities on the offensive nuke. So first, you're always gonna wanna buff. Longest to shortest is typically how I do it. So I'm just gonna get everything up. And yes, it's five things on my back bar and you can see Engine Guardian's proc. We're gonna get our weapon damage up. So we have weapon damage, we have our, our crit buff up, we're ready to go. Typically how I do this is I start my rotation by hitting a cutting die because I wanna set them off balance at range. You see the off balance? Now, if I fully charge heavy attack, I consume it and would stun them if they weren't a dummy. So we'll sit back here. We'll do this, try to get them off balance at range. We'll do a deep fissure, and then I'll usually hit birds of prey so I don't get stunned or uh, snared. And you can see right as I'm about to land that, fully charge, and then bang. You can almost time it exactly. It's gonna take some time in combat to get it down. But it's off balance, bugs, Rambo in, fully charge. You're trying to land your fully charge, Dawnbreaker, deep fissure, right at the same time. So it stuns them with the fully charged heavy attack so they can't block it. Dawnbreaker hits them so they have no way to mitigate the damage. And the same time, Deep Fissure hits them right before to debuff all of their armor. And now you have a target with almost no armor taking a full Dawnbreaker to the face. And that's how you slam Bo Rambo. All right, now we're gonna talk over the gear. Now, 
are you watching this? Did you skip ahead using the timestamps? All right, well, if you did, I still like you. I'm gonna use a common setup that I use pretty much on a lot of builds right now. And again, this is set up for big, huge AOE nukes. I'm gonna give you some alternatives if you want like more simple play style or a more 1v1 or 1vx playstyle. Here we go. All right, so um, well, I'm going to use a Monster Helm. Engine Guardian. Engine Guardian! Yes, you can make fun of me. have been using this forever. But with the bull match, I can basically get resources back indefinitely, so I don't have to use a five-piece for resource sustain. I don't have to use vines for resource sustain as well, so it fills my playstyle a lot better. It acts as a decoy, and I piggyback whatever resource I get for how I survive. So if the Engine Guardian procs and gives me magic, I spam Arctic Blast. If it procs and I get stamina, I spam Resolving Vigor and Dodge Rolls. And then if it procs health, I can just be very, very aggressive. So I love that two-piece Monster Hound. Now, what you probably should go with if you don't struggle with resource sustain is Battle Orcs. This is going to give you a massive amount of pain weapon and spell damage for the amount of ultimate that you use this is the full-on burst route if i'm playing with the group or i swap out a little bit more resource sustain skills this is what i go with another um set you might want to sleep on is zoles the ever wakeful this comes from imperial city and what it does is when you break free you stun everybody around you it's very very helpful for survivability and a counter gank especially with the slippery cp passive now first five piece offensive that i go with is plague break this was changed previously so it is still actually very very, very effective. You can only inflict one person with a plague break debuff every 20 seconds, but when they blow up, they still go boom and the plague break hits even harder now. The explosion not the dot. So again, this is a set that you're only going to use if you like big, huge AoE nukes. If you don't, the set I'd recommend is Stoon's Favor. When you deal damage to an enemy who is off balance, you increase your physical and spell pen by 5, 3, 1, 2 for 10 seconds. We can keep this up and keep this proc pretty much indefinitely using our main spammable. And if you're using Deep Fissure, you're going to have so much pen combined with Balorgs, you're going to shred people's armor. Absolutely fantastic. Another set is Essence Thief. Essence Thief comes from the White Gold Tower. It's more of a dueling set because when you light or heavy attack, you're going to get an Essence, gives you back health and stamina and increased damage done. It's what I use on my Necro. Doesn't fit the Warden because it's a little bit quicker, harder to get a hold of, especially with a dizzying swing, but I love this set. And if you need a good craftable option, don't sleep on Order's Wrath, increasing your crit damage and crit healing by 8%. So it allows you to do big, huge bursts without a proc set on your front bar and it's craftable coming from the high aisles. Back bar sets, you have a lot of options. Now, Mara's Bomb of the making of this video, it had been nerfed. So it reduced the healing by about 50%. I've been playing and experimenting with Mara's Bomb, and it's very, very good on specific classes. My Warden, I don't feel like I need it because I have great survivability without it, but I will admit it's a very good survivability set. So I'm going to give you my recommendation testing Mara's Bomb myself, and I don't think you necessarily need it on the Warden specifically because it just has so good survivability. You need something with a little more oomph. And that set where the little more oomph is Rallying Cry. So what this set's going to do is going to give you crit resistance. It's also going to give you back weapon and spell damage. And it has some group utility as well. So it makes you a little bit more tanky and it gives you weapon and spell damage. So it's a very, very good set to run and it comes in light. So you want to run this jewelry and then a back bar weapon and one body piece. Mara's Mom already talked about that heavy armor set. And when you remove a negative effect from you, you get health. Also, if you have a bunch of negative effects on you, it cleanses them all. So I haven't seen this proc plague break yet. I don't know if it does, but I haven't been uh, playing it with it too much on my warden because I don't struggle with survivability. Another alternative you can go with is powerful assault. This is great for group play. So instead of rallying cry, if some of uh, one of your friends runs rallying cry, run powerful assault. Those two buffs stack together and your group can have crazy high damage. And another alternative is clever alchemist. If you like the back bar, chugging down a potion, go on the offensive for a huge nuke. With the battle orgs, this would be the play. Still works, still very good. And now we're going to get to the mythic option. And this one is annoying to get. And this one can be kind of annoying to use until you get used to it. But it's Sea Serpent's Coil. Sea Serpent's Coil is basically the equivalent of two offensive damage sets in a one-piece mythic. That's why it's so strong. The only downside is it snares you. So you have to get used to that. Uh, being a warden, though, I have speed for days and I hardly even notice it. So while full health, you get a damage reduction. After taking damage in combat and you go back to full health, you're going to get 10 seconds of major berserk and major courage. Now, when you come back down, pop back up again with all of our heals and heals over time, 
you're maintaining a high uptime with Sea Serpent's Coil in PvP, and it just adds so much damage. It's incredible to use. Now, if you don't have that or don't like it, you can always go with Markin's Ring of Majesty. This is simple set and forget. A couple hundred weapon and spell damage and some armor. Very, very good. If you don't want to run Engine Guardian or you're having problems with stamina and or magic sustain, go with Torque. This is still a very good sustain set. Also, another option if you don't want to run a Monster Helm or you're really struggling with survivability, just go with good old Gaze of Sithis. And that leaves one piece up. So Armor of Trainee gives you a little bit more max health. So we're going to use that. There's also a new High IL set that has a little bit less max health called Druid's Braid, but you can craft it for a one piece. Here's a chart of what I run and why. So I'm going to run five medium, one heavy, one light, because I like that elude. If you don't want to use elude, I recommend three heavy, three medium, one light. I'm running Plague Break on the front with Maces, Sharpen, Nurn, Flame, Poison, Enchant. Back bar, I'm going Sword and Shear, Power, Sturdy with some Poisons on the back, and then really important to run at least two Swift, one Infuse for resource sustain, if not three Swift, especially if you're using Sea Serpent's Coil, you will not hit the speed cap. Now, uh, body traits. Since I'm running Rallying Cry, I don't see any point running Impenetrable. Thus, I go one Reinforce on the chest because it gives us the most armor back possible, three well fed because I dodge a lot, and three Sturdy since I'm using a Back Bar Sword and Shield. If you're not using the Back Bar Sword and Shield to Frost Staff, I run typically six well fed and one Reinforce because with Rallying Cry, the value of Impenetrable is very, very low. And then Glyphs, I'll run Prismatic on the big pieces, head, chest, and legs, and then Stamina on the rest. Reason being is you need a healthy magic and stamina pool since you're playing a hybrid. And then a couple weapon damage and then one stam recovery and that's usually it. Now if you're playing in no proc or Raven's Watch Cyrodiil, I get a lot of questions on this. Here's a simple gear chart and something that I would run. Titanborn, Blessing of Potence, Mark of Pariah, and then you can still run Torque. So if you have Torque as a mythic, you can slot that, believe it or not, and it does work. Carries in your entire resource sustain so you can't use Engine Guardian. And then if you want to run a Werewolf, here's what I recommend the current patch. Dragon's Appetite and Unleashed Terror. If you don't like Unleashed Terror, you can always run Rush of Agony. Either way, you need to use a Gap Closer, hard-hitting five-piece proc set. All right, jumping in game here, let's go over the champion points real quick. So four slottables here in the green craft tree. Steed's Blessing increases your movement speed relative to PvP. You have to go all the way up here and get some of these. So Gifted Rider increasing your mount speed, important for Cyrodiil, and then War Mount. Increase your mastery, removing all stamina cost outside of combat. And then you have a flex one. I got Treasure Hunter just if I'm doing PvE, but Ration or Liquid Efficiency is usually what I go with. Coming over to the blue champion points, and we have a Cultal Overload. This goes boom if an enemy has a status effect. So you can proc status effects a bunch of different ways. Typically, a uh, Flame or Poison Glyph, doing a fully charged heavy attack, will apply the Burning Status Effect or Poison. And if you want those big, huge nukes with Plague Break, you set someone up, bang, knock them down. Now, Fighting Finesse is another really good offensive one because it influences our healing and our damage as well. So those are two that I like. And then Exploiter. Talked about this a little bit e earlier, but it's 10% damage done for an off-balance enemy. Now, the reason why that's so useful is you come over here to Master at Arms, it's only 6%. So you don't have 100% uptime with the Exploiter because off-balance doesn't last forever, but it's about the most burst possible. And off balance with the twirlies over their head, bang, that's what it's about. And then defensive champion point, if you wanna go one, the Ironclad is the most effective because it's uh, pretty much all damage a lot of times. And so I got Fighting Finesse, Exploiter, Ironclad, and Occultal Overload. A good flex spot for um, super high survivability here is Focus Mending. So this will apply to your Arctic Blast and Resolving Vigor, and it's 10%. So mitigation CPs now are six, focus mending is still 10%. So consider that if you want big, huge uh, healing yourself. Moving over to the red tree. So I don't take the um, one here balance vitality anymore because I don't really need max health. I have armor, which is an obvious one, survival instincts. If you're affected by a status effect, your basically block cost, your dodge rolling, all that stuff is reduced by 25%. So very, very strong. That's why you can perma block a lot of times and or dodge roll if you have this champion point slottable. Moving on, uh, Pain's Refuge. More dots we have on us, the more tanky we're gonna be. I'm not running Mara's Bomb, so I'm not gonna get a cleanse all the time unless I sit there and spam bull net. So the more pressure I have, the more survival I'll be. And the quintessential one here is Celerity. You need speed on the Warden to survive. Otherwise, you're daddy spaghetti. Now, also consider bracing anchor. If you're blocking a lot or you're panicky when you take pressure, you have to go clear over here into this one. It increases your block mitigation by 20%. This will also apply to using a sword and shield ultimate. So if you want to cheese it, you can just use that sword and shield ultimate and bang, you get the mitigation and you can go on the offensive. 
It's kind of a cool little trick. And that's the champion points. My character here is an orc. The orc is the best for this type of playstyle because I love the speed and I love getting back the healing when I'm doing damage. Another good alternative is Khajiit. If you run the high crits build, you're going to have the most burst possible. Another one is an Imperial. It's going to reduce the cost of everything, including your ultimate, and make you very, very good resource sustain so you can free up something else to run like Battle Orgs instead of Engine Guardian. Good alternative as well. So Munda Stone of Choice, I'm going with the Thief. I'm also going with Smoked Bear Haunch. This is expensive. You can go with the alternative Jewels of Mistru, and it's actually much, much cheaper. As far as potions go, I go with good old Tripods because I need the recovery. I need the boost to all my resource sustain. If I'm playing in a coordinated group, I use Essence of Immovability to go on the offensive charge and not get CC'd. Actually swap the Powerful Assault, Back Bar, Five Piece, use these, and we just go in for huge actual nukes. Attribute-wise, I like to aim for about 32,000 health inside the PvP context that I'm in. Remember, the Arctic Blast is going to give you a little bit more HP. So usually I run 32 health, 32 stamina. Anything lower, you're just going to have to have faster reaction time. I'm almost 40 now, so I got zero reaction time. So that's why I run about 32 uh, health. Well, gang, that's the video. Lord Warden is complete. And I hope you enjoy this. Whether you want the uh, dizzying swing set up or you want the whirling blades and the big, huge AOE nukes, I hope you got something out of this video. You can see why it's so strong. Both the passive and active skills are currently set up for this tanky meta in game right now. And pick up this class if you want something fast, heavy, hitting, and big, massive AOE. Especially good healing, finally, for once. Give it up for Lord Warden. Also, if you got something out of this video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and leave me a comment, and we'll see you for the next build. Thanks for watching.